Hi, and welcome to Projects and Things. My name's Eve. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make custom flight cases. So for my specific purpose, I'm going to make a flight case for these two um, HDMI screens, but the process is the same for any type of flight case. And it all starts with materials. So the first choice you have with materials is to go with wood versus plastic. Wood has the benefit of being very strong, but it's also a lot heavier. The plastic is going to be lightweight, but it's going to flex a little more. Um, in terms of look, it will be pretty much the same. The plastic is colored all the way through, so it's just black black. The wood on the other hand is layered plywood with a vinyl black thing on top. So if you can have absolutely no flex, go with wood. If it's fine that it flexes a tiny bit, go with plastic. Uh, for my flight case, I'm going to do a combination of both. I need some rigid pieces, wood, and some, I don't really care pieces, plastic. For the edges of all the panels, you have these aluminum pieces. They simply slide in here and provide rigidity and strength. And then for the corners, you have aluminum and plastic corners. I chose these plastic corners because they're plenty strong. You can also go with aluminum. So again, if you need pure strength, aluminum, these plastic ones are just fine. Just don't throw your flight cases. And then there's handles, so you can lift things up. Last component is these butterfly locks. They will be the part that interlocks my flight case so I can take them with me together open them up and have them separately. Everything goes together with rivets. So when you have your materials picked out, it's time to start measuring. And here's what I mean with measuring. I put whatever I'm gonna put in the flat case on a flat surface and I just start adding pieces. In this case, these rails are meant to be screwed into a piece of wood. So I put that down so I know how far that comes and that perfectly covers this edge. Then I take two of the pieces that make up the closing part. So it's a male and female part that slot into each other. I'm gonna start with the female part that has a groove down the middle and all the corner pieces also have a groove. So you put one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I measured a piece of aluminum rail that goes along here that will fit in between here. Later when the screen is attached to the plywood, I can also attach the plywood to this rail. So if looking in from the outside, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole here so that my screw head can sink down and in here attach the aluminum into the plywood. And to continue on with my rails all the way around. Now, before I attach this stuff together, I'm gonna drill my pilot holes. Start with a small drill and work your way up to a bigger one. And the cool thing about aluminum is you can work it with most woodworking tools. So you can use your standard drills, saw blades, whatever, just go slow. And now the head of your screw will fit down into this and disappear. realized that in order to put these butterfly locks on, you have to cut holes or pieces out of this aluminum side. So I quickly made the mating piece to the female one. So this is basically the male one. The only difference there is that it has a little edge 
that slots into the little groove on the female side. So with these two pieces matching up, I can now mark the position of the butterfly lock. So in the case of my flight case, I decided to make my lock here on the two short sides. The reason I did so is that on one of the long sides, you will have rubber feet and the other long side will have the actual handle. And so this way I can leave my screens standing upright, slide them both together and then close the lock. The holes I'm marking are to be pre-drilled later for the rivets and the part that you have to cut out here is the part where this thicker piece of material is going to fit into. Once you have the slot cut out, you can pre-drill the two side holes where the rivets are going to go into. So to attach these, you have one of these things. It's riveting pliers. You insert your rivet, go through the pilot hole and the thing you're trying to attach, and then simply squeeze a few times until it pops. Hence the term pop rivet. Wait for it. Wait for it. Pop! There we go. I decided to cut the planks that go in the side to 10 centimeters because I dry fitted one plank and took a corner edge put it on there and then just decided that this was a nice width for my screen so there will be one on this side one on this side so I can carry it as one case and then fold them open I cut the edge profiles that will go around this thing and for that it was easy all I had to do was copy these lengths so I have one two three four of these pieces that are going to be the long sides copy this length and then another four pieces that are going to be this edge. Copy that one. There are a lot of places around that sell you flight case materials. So they simply sell you the plywood with the black coating on it. They will sell you the black plastic. I got all of this stuff from a reseller that sells just pieces for you to make your own flight case. The difficulty does come in calculating the amount of corners you need, the female pieces, the male pieces. So you do have to look a bit up there um, exactly what you want. Okay, so at this point we have a box. And now it's time to add some functionality to this box. The first thing I'm gonna add is a handle up top. You take the, what do you call it, this thicker part at the back, you measure what this part is and you cut it out of the top, put it down, and then we put pop rivets in, that gives us a handle. The same token on the bottom of this case, I'm going to put eight feet, four for each screen. Um, and then before the screens go in, I want to attach a functional door at the back. cut off one corner at 45 degrees so I have an opening for my cables to stick out while I still be able to close the box. Voila, cut the corner out and I cut out this little pocket here. And so this is the locking mechanism that slides in here, pushed by a spring, it lifts behind here and is covered by a plate.
Now it's time to put our door, yes, on the flight case. Position my door where I want it. Flip. And then I'm going to fix these in place with more rivets here and here, but I'll save you the trouble and just do it like this. Ah, voila. So now my hinges are in and I also added in here two washers to give a positive stop to my thingamabob here. So with the back panel in, I can attach the last strip of siding into this. Sometimes you have to be gentle and sometimes you just have to unleash the fury. Four of these rubber feet. Here the procedure is as follows. You drill a pilot hole through the foot into the wood. Then you make that hole a little bit bigger with an eight millimeter drill bit and you put one of these nuts in the back. And then this attaches to this with a screw. These rubber feet will keep your case stable on the tables you put them on and they won't scratch the table or your case surface. Because these are screens and they will be living on top of a table quite often. Now it's time to put the screen into our flight case. My two pieces of plywood go under here and they get attached with teeny tiny screws because these will be visible on the front. Voila. Make sure our screen is the right way up. You want the power to be facing down. The goal is to have it recessed just a little bit on the inside so that when the two boxes close, the screens don't actually hit each other. Straight into our plywood rail. And final step is cables. So, the way I want to use my case is to be able to open this, to have power and video signal in here. And when I close the box, it can still be connected, but my electronics aren't visible. That's the goal. And if I want to leave the job again, open it up, stuff the whole thing in here, and pack them up, facing each other, close the box, and then you simply close the butterfly locks. And there you have it, how to make a custom flight case, in this case for two monitors that live together. So, thank you very much for watching. If you like these things I do, then please consider subscribing. There should be a button to do so below. And also here and here will be videos all about making stuff. So thank you, till next time, bye.